Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are talking about the Pixhawk 2.1, also known as the Cube. Now I want to go through pretty much everything hopefully there is to know about this flight controller in the sense of what it is, what models there are, carrier boards, GPS and why I think this is the only version of Pixhawk that you should look at using. Now I know Painless put out a video very similar to this last week but I have actually been working on this for quite some time so we're going to put it out there anyway and hopefully give you guys some information you might not have seen anywhere else. If you like this video please do subscribe to the channel, there's a button in the bottom right hand corner of this video and by clicking that you'll receive updates on any more that we make in the future. Okay, so before we get started properly, I'm going to try and explain the Pixhawk family a little bit first. Pixhawk is an open source flight controller hardware design. That's the easiest way to start with this. There have been many, many different versions of them. They are all based on a high level design, which is called FMU. So the original Pixhawk was called FMU version two, and that consisted of the original Pixhawk, the Pix Falcon and the HK Pilot 32. The Pixhawk 2.1 is based on the FMU version three, along with the Pix Hack. The FMU version four and four Pro was the Pix Racer and Pixhawk three Pro. And the FMU version five, which is the latest design, houses the Pixhawk 4 and the Pixhack version 5. Now there is a ton of differences between all of these flight controllers however at the very simplest level to think about it is one design is not necessarily better than the other for general use applications and whilst each one has its upsides downsides and benefits the reality is for most users the Pixhawk 2 will be the best flight controller to go for. The reason for that really is that it is based on the original Pixhawk design and it's taken what everybody loved, tried and tested and improved upon it and made it better. There are some other reasons and I'll go into them a little bit more further on in the video. But for me, if you are looking for a Pixhawk right now, regardless of there being the Pixhawk 4, the one to consider is the Pixhawk 2.1 or what is known as the Cube because that is going to do pretty much everything you will ever need to do with a flight controller. Just to give you some specific background on the Pixhawk 2, that version was originally designed by Philip Browse when he worked at 3DR and it was built and put in the Solo. Unfortunately, 3DR pretty much went out of business before that flight controller ever made it into the standalone market. After leaving 3DR, Philip Rao set up his own company called Profi CSC and they were the ones who brought us the Pixhawk 2.1 or what is now known as the Cube in its standalone form. The reason they called it the 2.1 not the 2 was basically just to step it forward a bit because there was some little changes to the design. You'll also now notice that I keep calling it the Cube and the reason for this is they're actually moving away from the Pixhawk name and from now on it's only really going to be known as the Cube to take it away from that whole family of flight controllers to avoid the confusion. So on a high level, why should you choose the Cube or the Pixel 2.1 over all of those other Pixel models? Well, it's quite simple for me, really. It is designed by Philip Rouse, who has a massive amount of experience in this area. Secondly, they offer massive amounts of support. They are extremely accessible. They are contactable on Facebook and they will help you as soon as they possibly can. They also have a very large amount of community support behind them because they were part of 3DR and he's gone off on his own. The community has really stepped up behind them to make sure they support them as much as they possibly can. As I've said, the design is loosely based on the FMU version 2, so it does mean it is tried and tested and the improvements they made are ones that really do bring benefit. The big one for me also is the fact that these guys have committed to future development and we're going to talk about that a lot more further on in this video but there isn't just going to be one cube there are going to be several models of it as well as multiple other products as well and we're already seeing that with things like the new here link digital link so it's not just a flight controller they're going to be bringing us a whole host of stuff to go with it. And really the final reason and the most important one is the Ardra Pilot community because they are really putting a lot of support behind this flight controller as well. And whilst they do port the software to all of the controllers, the 2.1 has been around for a little bit of time now and it does get a lot of support from the guys over at Ardra Pilot. 
Taking a closer look at the flight controller itself, the biggest difference between the Pixhawk 2.1 and the original Pixhawk is that the sensors are now isolated within the flight controller itself. So it has triple redundant IMU as well as dual onboard barometers. Of these three IMUs, two of them are on a soft mounted isolated board within the flight controller. So it now means that you no longer have to worry about mounting the controller itself on a soft mount you can hard mount the unit on your frame and all of the vibration isolation will be handled from within the controller itself. There is also a heater on board the IMU as well and this means that you can use it in cold conditions and it means the flight controller will actually behave in a much more stable manner. The overall design of the flight controller is entirely different to the original Pixhawk with the controller itself being in a cube and you having a baseboard then for all the connections. As I said this controller has has been totally redesigned and whilst it is based on that original design they have made massive amounts of improvements to all of the sensors and the layout of the controller as well and then that's what in my opinion makes this probably the best Pixhawk there is out there. As I touched on, the cube is actually a two-part design, with the cube itself being the main flight controller with all of the main sensors on board, and then you have a carrier board which handles all of the power, the I.O. and the main PWM inputs and outputs. The basics are you do need both parts to be able to use this, but the advantage is that you can choose a baseboard that best suits your needs, and I'll come on to that a little bit more at the end of the video. Now the first version of the cube is the black one, however as I mentioned Profi CNC have committed to making more models and as you can see there's going to be an entire rainbow of them. In this next bit of the video I'm going to explain the differences between the black cube as well as all of the other models that are available now and are coming hopefully in the future. The first cube, which is the black one and is the original one, and as I said at the start, it has triple redundant IMUs, which two of them are vibration isolated and the two are heated as well. It uses an STM32F427 180 MHz CPU. It has dual barrows, it has the heating system to be used in very low temperatures, has tons of IO ports, and as you can see, it uses this new DF17 connector on the bottom, and this is the same connector on all the models which allows you to plug it into the baseboard. It has an onboard battery backup for the FMU as well as separate power supplies for FMU and IO. As I mentioned earlier, this is just the flight controller itself and you will need to choose which baseboard version you're going to use depending on what your application is. On the side of the cube itself, it does have a micro USB port which can be used for backup power, but all of the main connections for this flight controller come through the baseboard and in through that DF17 connector. The next version of the cube is known as the green cube and this is a special modified version of the black cube. It's specifically designed to be used in the 3DR Solo. It is basically an identical spec apart from it solves one known issue that the Solo had when it left the factory and they have increased the voltage signal into 5 volt and this solves a problem where some Solos were randomly falling out of the sky. It's really good the guys over at Profi CNC produced this model for Solo owners because 3DR never actually fixed that problem. As I've said this model is only to be used in the Solo and if you are going to use it you will also need to install open Solo firmware as well. The next cube to be released is going to be known as the Cube Mini or the Purple Cube and this one is virtually the same spec as the original black one, however it doesn't have the heated and isolated IMUs. The sensors on this cube are mounted to the main board and there is no internal isolation at all. This one is specifically designed for boat and rover applications where the vibration isolation isn't actually needed or it's done in other ways. The advantage to this model means that it's going to be about 50% smaller in height as well. The next cube is known as the blue cube and this one is absolutely identical in spec to the black one in every way apart from it is built and manufactured within the United States of America. The idea of this model is for customers who need one that comes from controlled manufacturing and they have security concerns about external manufacturers in China and things like that. Now with an open source flight controller it's a bit strange to want that because you can check everything anyway however there is a market for it so the guys at Profi CNC are going to provide 
need it. The only real downside to this model is it is going to cost about twice as much as the original Black Cube due to the labour differences in the United States than over in Taiwan or China. However, it's going to be there, so if you want to support your homegrown country, there will be a blue version of the Cube which is made in the USA. The next model of the cube will be the yellow cube and overall spec is going to be similar to the black one however they have upgraded the CPU to the STM32 F7 series. That means the clock speed is up from 180 megahertz to 216 megahertz. It also has a little bit more RAM as well depending on the model. Now it will give approximately in best case scenarios up to two times the performance increase over the black cube. For general users you won't notice this but for industrial applications or developers this is something that is getting people a little bit excited because it means they're going to be able to do a little bit more on board the flight controller than they were able to do with the original black one. If the yellow cube wasn't quick enough for you then there is going to be a supercharged version known as the orange cube. Again a future model with the same similar base spec as the black one however the CPU has been upgraded to the STM32 H7 series so that means 400 megahertz CPU, 1 mega RAM. So that's going to push it about two times faster than the yellow one before it. Now, this again is only going to be industrial users or developers. However, if you need the most performance you can possibly get, this is the one you're going to be wanting to look at. The one thing I should probably say on both the orange and the yellow model, I have labelled them for industrial and developer use. However, that is here and now today. Obviously, as software gets better in the future, you will find that at some point, people will bring the spec of the software and the features of the software up to use all of the performance within these controllers. Here and now, they're going to be for industrial use and developers, but in the future, you may be wanting to put one of these in your aircraft anyway. Finally, the last cube to talk about is the red cube, and this one is pretty sketchy on the detail side at the moment. It is a future model, and what I've been able to find out is this, and it could be totally wrong. But overall, it's going to have a total redesign and be a sealed design, which means it splash proof, dunk proof, things like that. Aluminium housing is going to be 100% footprint compatible with the original cube. It's going to have dual static ports, they're going to upgrade the micro connector to USB-C, improved sensors, additional CAN3, and the interesting part is that it's going to be software selectable between PWM 3.3 or 5 volt. So whereas I said the black cube was for hobby and the green cube was for solo, you're going to be able to put this one in whichever one you want and choose in software which one is connected into. Okay, so what version to use? Well, 99% of people are going to need the Black Cube. It will do absolutely everything you will ever need to do with a flight controller, whether it be industrial, commercial, or hobby applications. The Black One will pretty much serve all your purposes. If you're a solo user you will want the green cube obviously to resolve those issues with the signaling and if you are a rover builder or a boat builder you could use the black cube because it will still do everything the purple cube does but the purple one is a, a little bit smaller and it is just better overall for those rover and boat applications. With regards to the yellow and orange versions, well, they really are right now for developers and system builders. Most people are not going to even know what to do with the additional performance those models will provide. And the red one at the moment is basically hearsay. We haven't had any more information than what I provided in this. So if you're looking for a cube, if it's not in a Solo and it's not in a Rover, get yourself the black one. The next thing we're going to talk about is carrier boards because as I mentioned earlier the cube itself is just the flight controller bit you still need to put it on a carrier board which gives you all of the external connections. Now Profi and the guys at Hex also make a standard carrier board. It originally came in two versions. One had the option to put an Intel Edison in the base and the other one didn't. Now the Intel Edison is obsolete you can only get the one with the standard base without the Edison fitment. Now it's a standard baseboard with the DF17 connector. It has all of your usual connectors for your PWM on the output. It has I2C, two CAN ports, four UART ports, Telem, your GPS, dual power inputs for power one and power two and I'll explain a bit more about that later on. It has the USB console connections as well as everything you need to do to connect it into your aircraft. No matter if you put this in a plane boat rover it will pretty much cover most applications the only downside to this carrier board is that it is quite big it's not massive but it is large compared to the cube itself 
To get around these size issues, they have also made a mini version of the carrier board and it has virtually the entire same specification and performance as the original one, apart from it is substantially smaller. It doesn't come housed, so you just get the PCB itself and it does need post mounting, so you would need to find out a way of mounting it into your applications or your aircraft, boat or rover. However, it does mean if you needed a smaller platform than the original carrier board, the mini carrier board is well worth a look and this one is becoming very very popular right now the next board whilst worth considering especially if you're a multi-rotor user is the spectra works multi-rotor carrier board now this has everything built in it has your voltage regulation your current sensing as well as various other options as well now it set up in a quad configuration with inputs and outputs on each corner however it also allows for a coaxial setup as well because there is two motor outputs on each one now if you're a multi-rotor builder this one is certainly worth a look no matter if you're a custom builder or you're a hobby builder but the thing to take into account is it is quite large there is a fantastic spec on this board though and it does have absolutely pretty much everything you would ever need to build yourself a very nice custom multi-rotor there is also a version of that carrier board made by Profi CNC called the Core. Now, my understanding is it's built by Profi CNC under license from SpectraWorks. It is basically the same board as the one I showed you just now, apart from it's made by Profi CNC. So if you are after it, if the one is a bit too expensive and you can get the other one at a better price, then they will both pretty much do the same job. The last board I'm going to show you is called the Drony Pilot and it's an all-in-one carrier board specifically designed for fixed wing applications. It has a built-in P900 telemetry module as well as a built-in GPS GNS module as well. Now that is just the chip, not the antenna, so you would need to use an external antenna. It's also got an airspeed sensor and it also is Raspberry Pi module compatible. Um, there are loads of carrier boards out there i've picked a small selection here to show you but i believe there are actually over 20 now these are the main ones that i have seen but there are loads that are available for different applications no matter what you're doing if you are a hobbyist you're probably better looking at either the standard carrier board or the carrier board mini those are the two main carrier boards for most people if you want to build yourself a custom quad or a custom coaxial quad application the larger board with everything on board is worth a look as well however but for most people, the first or the second one will cover almost every application. The next thing we're going to talk about is power modules because you do need to power your flight controller. Now, when you buy the Pixhawk 2.1 or the Cube kit, you do get this power module included with it, which is the one by Profi CNC. Now, it works up to 8S batteries, 30 amp continuous. It has both voltage monitoring and current sensing on board as well. XT60 connections on either side for easy usage. And overall, it's a good little module. However, I will say that this is a basic module that is tossed in with a kit if you are doing anything that is just not a basic aircraft or multi-rotor i would strongly suggest upgrading your power system because the pixhawk 2.1 does support using multiple power inputs so it has redundancy on both the main power and the secondary power and you really do want to try and take advantage of that and if you're going to upgrade i would strongly suggest taking a look at a maunch power system now i think it's called maunch i'm not exactly sure how to say it but that's how i'm going to pronounce it in this video they make some extremely high quality sensors and regulators. Now it is a two part system with the regulator being separate to the current sensor. You can get the current sensor on 50, 100 or 200 amp versions. So that will cover pretty much any scenario you have. And they have regulators which will work from 2S up to 14S in total. There is also some additional accessories available as well. And there's a multi sensor hub to allow you to use it with literally four or more sensors on very very large multi-battery aircraft. A typical Cube Pixel 2 setup with the mount system is shown here and it is a redundant setup which has a regulator and current sensor for the main power one with a second additional regulator for backup on the power two. So if your main regulator failed, you would still have power for your flight controller through the additional second backup. And as I've said, they also have a whole range of accessories which work with the Pixhawk and Arger Pilot as well for very large multi-battery applications. 
The last thing I want to talk about from Profi CNC is the Here 2 GPS. Now they've made their own GPS unit that works alongside the Pixel Tube stroke the Cube and I have the original version and it is the most sensitive GPS I've ever used if I'm honest. They've also now created an updated version of this as well which is called the Here 2. Um, it's an updated version which has the ability to receive up to three satellite systems. It uses industry leading sensitivity, it has advanced jamming and spoofing what is very interesting of the here 2 compared to the original one is a it has a new built-in processor running chibios and i'll come on to chibios a bit more shortly but it means that you can run custom applications on board the gps as well it will have the option of running both can or i2c transmission now here and now today it works on i2c which is the standard gps connector however it will allow you to connect it to can and that means a freeing you up your i2c bus for other applications as well as a more reliable connection it also has a complete built-in imu accelerator compass gyro and barometer as well so this gps will almost be a standalone flight controller in itself whilst it doesn't have the on board full information like the flight controller has this new model from here is very very interesting and it's going to open some doors to some very cool applications in the future the last big change on the here too is that it now has four independent customizable led colors now i have the original here i don't have the here too on my pixel 2 but if you're going to buy one today or you've got the original here you really do want to look at the new here 2 gps it is a little bit more expensive but based on the specification it is well worth it Finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about Chibios firmware. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't know 100% a lot about this. However, I'm going to try and explain the bits I do know and I do understand. Now, the easiest way to think about Pixhawk is it's a number of different bits in one. You have the flight control hardware, you then have a software which sits directly above the hardware called Nutex, and then you have the PX firmware above that px4 firmware and then you have ardra pilot which is like your main operating system which sits on the top now the problem with this is they can control ardra pilot the ardra pilot community and they can do the reference designs and they can design their own flight controllers like we have the pixhawk 2.1 or the cube however the bit in the middle which is the nutx and the px4 firmware gets all a bit political and complicated and there are some issues building their software on top of it and the basics are they don't have full control over those two bits in the middle they can control the hardware and they can control ardra pilot but they can't control the bit in the middle so there's been this decision to move over to something called chibios and chibios will replace both the px4 firmware and the nutex firmware in the middle now there are some big benefits to the guys at ardra pilot doing this number one as i said they have total control number two it is a smaller overall package so whereas before they were beginning to run out of space on the older flight controllers it means that that is no longer an issue another good side effect of moving to chibios is better loop times or faster performance the same software so ardra pilot runs much quicker on the same hardware with chibios in the middle than it does with px4 another thing for them is that it is an open platform and that it gives them total control from the hardware all the way up to the Ardra Pilot software. Now Audrocopter version 3.60 onwards is the first version to be using Chibios. All versions before that still use NetX and PX4. All versions after that are now using Chibios. It is a brave new world for Ardra Pilot and what it does is freeze them up from some of the complexities restrictions and limitations around px4 it will obviously take away some benefits as well but the audra pilot community felt it was time to split themselves off completely from the px4 side of things and they're now able to pretty much stand on their own with full controller from the hardware all the way up to the flight control audra pilot software itself you might be wondering, well, why have I mentioned this when I've been talking about the Pixhawk flight controller? Well, the reality is, whilst I was talking about the orange version and the yellow version being faster, 
This move to Chibios means the existing version, the Black Cube, will run better than it did on the older version, which was on PX4 and Natex. So it means that the Cube is still going to be the best option to look at now, unless you are a developer who's going to need that extra speed. But this move to Chibios has breathed life into the other flight controllers, and it does mean that the 2.1 is still absolutely relevant today and as I mentioned at the start of the video you've got flight controllers like the Pixel 4 and they are faster it uses a better processor but you don't actually need that speed and you don't need all that extra memory because the existing ones are going to run Chibios and they're going to run it more efficiently than they did before. And that is it for this very long video. Um, as I've said, I only recommend using the Cube or the Pixel 2.1. In my opinion, it is the most stable, the best supported and the most reliable flight controller there is out there. You can get it from ProfeCNC.com. If you're in the UK, you can get it from 3DXR, so 3DXR.co.uk. Spectraworks in the US, I think it is. Uh, Robot Shop in Europe as well. That's it for this video. If I have got anything wrong, please do let me know in the comments. I do try to give you guys the best possible information I can, but I don't always get it 100% correct. As I said, I had been working on this one for quite some time. However, there is a chance I haven't quite got everything 100%, but please do let me know and we'll try and get it corrected. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel and I will do another video again soon.